I've been a broken record and say that I'm still behind my videos. Um, I was working this morning and it's race week here in Galway, which if anyone has ever been knows that it's like the busiest time of the year, hands down in Galway City. Um, everyone goes to Galway races, which is the horse racing, like the main horse racing event of the year. People come like from all over the world, but basically it means that it's like the busiest week for makeup artists. <laughs> it really, really is. So I need to do something quick because I'm not ahead in my videos like I usually am. I've decided to do the beauty scenario tag because it'll be a nice easy one to do and I find them kind of interesting, I find them very interesting to watch. And I have new lighting as well so hopefully you like this. I got the Glamcore lighting. Um, can you see? So these things move, I just ha I'm going to keep them in that posi position but um, it's just so handy and so much better because I can plug it in on like the last ones I had. But anyhow, back to this. I'm going to do the beauty scenario tag. There are only eight questions, so let's see if I can keep it down to under the ten minutes and I'm already gone over the minute. So the first question is, you have to get rid of all your foundations and you can only keep one high-end one and one drugstore one. Which one do you keep? You see, this would vary depending on the time of the year and all this kind of stuff. Oh, I'm going to think about this way too hard. Let's see, I'll just go by what I'm doing now. Um, I probably will just go with what's on my desk because they're there for a reason, I'm using them a lot. So a drugstore one that I'm loving, or no, a high-end one, sorry. The high-end one that I'm loving is the Quercetin and Oak um, Anti-Aging Foundation. This is just a really lovely, like a luminous foundation. It's really good coverage though. I was really surprised when I, you know, when I did try this, I got this when I was in the States because it was such a brilliant foundation. I was surprised I hadn't heard more of it beforehand, but I really, really like that one and it comes with the pump and all that kind of stuff. Um, then the pharmacy foundation that I'm absolutely loving um, is the Bourjois Healthy Mix one. This is a long wearing one. It gives it like a natural satin kind of finish or a natural matte finish. It's a lovely foundation, basically. It's one of my favorite all time, like pharmacy or drugstore foundations. I'm number 51 in this. I'm actually number, five bisque in this which is surprising because it sounds like it would be dark but both of these are around the NC15 mark so that's my first ones um, but in reality I couldn't just stick to two foundations that just wouldn't happen. <laughs> Number two you go for an interview and the lady interviewing you has lipstick on her teeth do you approach the subject or ignore it completely um, and that's making me check my own teeth. I'd ignore it just because uh, you don't know how she'll take it up. Some people don't take criticism or like pointing out stuff very well and you don't want to take the chance I think when it's an interview situation and like I think a million other people have said she doesn't know how long it's been on her teeth for after like if she checks the mirror even the second you leave the room it could have just been on for a minute you know she doesn't know how long it's been on for so I think it's just safer not to say anything now if it was a buddy of mine of course I'd tell them I'd be like would you check your teeth but not a stranger and certainly not in an interview um situation I just don't think it would be like a good move so then number three is, you're not feeling yourself and you need to pick me up. Which lipstick do you put on to make yourself feel beautiful? Um, well, lipstick is the last thing I think I'd look for if I wanted to feel better about myself. I mean, I know lipstick can be really nice and it really brightens up the face and stuff, but I think if I was feeling absolutely shite, I'd probably be more likely to want to wear something luminous on my skin rather than lipstick. But saying that, I do like a good lipstick. So probably Max Impassioned. Um, let me grab it free. So this is Max Impassioned Lipstick and it's like a coral pink. It's just one of those really lovely, bright, fun, like bright lipsticks really. It's a real summery one as well, I think, because of the tone. I do like to wear these kind of um, orange ones as well. Like today I'm wearing my Sleek Makeup Tangerine Scream. I love bright orange lipsticks but I would be a little bit more conscious about my teeth that's the only thing but um, either of those two would do the job I'd say. Okay so the next question you go back in time for a day to your teenage years how would you do your hair and makeup differently? To be honest I really loved how I did my hair and my makeup when I was a teenager when I was in like uh, junior cert so I was around 15 years old. I had a really high undercut that went up really, really high there at the back of my head. And then um, like I used to dye the rest of my hair every kind of colour. My teachers hated, well not every teacher, but particularly one teacher, the vice principal, she hated me for it. And um, you know, she wanted to get me out of school, but it didn't work because I was such a good student. But anyhow, um, I really liked my hair. I thought it was really funky. I was obsessed with the craft and the crow when I was that age. 
and that's pretty much how I want it to look and it's kind of how I did. And then as regards to makeup went, I was actually pretty decent at my makeup at that stage. Now when I first started wearing makeup when I was like 12, maybe I wasn't as good then because I was borrowing my friend's makeup and God knows what colour I was you using at that stage. But um, I'd say maybe what I would do is wear some blusher or contouring because I didn't wear any blusher or contouring until I was well into my early 20s. And... I wasn't much of a lipstick wearer either. I wear a little bit, but it was really the eyes. Like I'd always play up the eyes. My eyebrows were like thin though. So maybe I'd say the eyebrows, like they were so thin that like they were just very, very thin. Like I pretty much plucked them to oblivion and there was only like maybe like two hairs width of a, you know, line. But um, besides that, I quite liked my look. I thought it was quite funky. You ask your hairdresser for, for a shoulder length pixie lot haircut and they hear wrong give you a pixie cut do you a smile say thank you and you call your mum hysterical b cry in the chair and things get awkward or c complain to the manager and demand a refund absolutely none of those three answers are me to be honest i'm very forward but i'm very polite forward so the first one smile and say thank you and call your mum hysterical First of all, I'm not that emotional. <laughs> I wouldn't get hysterical over something like that. I don't think I'd be happy about it, but I wouldn't get hysterical over it. And I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't smile and say thank you about something I'm not happy with. I wouldn't cry in the chair, because like I said, I'm not that emotional. And see, I wouldn't complain and demand a refund. Well, first of all, um, it, unless you're asleep, you'd want to see her cutting into your hair and you'd pretty much stop her on time before there was a huge amount of damage done, I'd imagine. Um, if for whatever reason I like had some kind of episode where I just totally zoned out and didn't notice her giving me the pixie cut, I would just say to her straight off, that's not what I asked for. Like I'm really, really, really not happy with that. But I wouldn't be like a total bitch about it. I'd just let her know and just see what they could do. I know they couldn't like make it grow back, but like see if I could get extensions or something. Um, It's not the end of the world by any means. Then number six, your friend surprises you with a four day city break and you have one hour to pack. What do all, do it all palette do you pack in your makeup bag? Um, I don't really have a do it all palette but there is one little palette that does a wee bit more than normal for me and I'll just grab that. Okay, I couldn't find the one I was looking for but I have two of them and this is the other palette I have. Ew, there's an eyelash in there, that's gross. But basically this is, um, well it's this or the other palette, it's usually the other palette, but this will give you the idea. It's, um, this comes on pretty much every break or holiday with me. And it's the NYC Individualized Palettes. And this one is the Central Park one. The one that I usually bring has more kind of um, purpley tones in it. But anyhow, um, this one is the one for green eyes, I think. It's just handy, it comes with a eye primer, a highlighter and then your different eyeshadows. But this highlighter, I'd use this all over my face. This primer actually works decent as a um, concealer in a pinch. And then the colors are lovely. They're really, really lovely. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. They're really lovely eyeshadows for the price, particularly because NYC is very inexpensive. I got this in pennies. And I love the highlight, you know, to highlight the rest of my face as well. So these are the only palettes that I kind of bring everywhere. But I don't really do do it all palettes. I like my individual things. But I don't like bring a million things with me on holiday either. I don't actually tend to wear a huge amount of makeup on holiday. <laughs> I don't mean to drag this out, but I really don't. Okay, so your house has been robbed. Don't worry, everyone is safe. But your beauty stash has been raided. What's the product you really hope is safe? Um, I was thinking about this when I saw other people doing their thing. And honestly, I can't answer it. I'd probably have to say like, maybe now my, my lighting or something like that, which is a bit geeky, but um, like, all my brushes say because I have so many brushes and I'd be devastated if they were gone but like I think when you're a makeup artist and it's your like your living you'd be absolutely devastated I think I'd like have a bit of a conniption but I can't like think of one particular thing my brushes really I'd be very very sad about my brushes okay and then the last question is your friend borrows your makeup and returns it in awful condition. Do you A, just pretend you haven't noticed, B, ask them to repurchase it, or C, secretly do the same to something of theirs? Again, neither of those is me. First of all, I wouldn't just pretend I haven't noticed because if they're a good friend, like, why would you? <laughs> you should be able to say stuff to them. Two, I wouldn't ask them to repurchase in just like a really 
gruff manner. And three, I definitely wouldn't secretly do the same thing to their, them because I think that's really sneaky and horrible. But I would just go, what the hell happened to my makeup? I'd just be very forward about it in like a nonchalant kind of way. Um, and I'd just be like, what did you do? Simple as that. And then I'd just wait to see their reaction and then I'd probably go from there. If they were really defensive and horrible about it, I'd be like, well, you need to buy me a new one. Or if they were like, oh, I'm so sorry, like this happened and this happened, I'd be like, yeah, don't worry, that happens. So it really depends on their on their reaction. Anyhow, that's that. I need to get this edited ASAP and get it up for you because it's four o'clock here and this needs to be up in two hours. So I'll chat to y'all really soon, guys. I'm gonna spend the next two days filming to try and catch up and get back on schedule because um, I'm just so behind at the moment. And that's it, so I'll chat to y'all really soon. Slam, guys.